Uh, I thought we were going to get Trojan in the server. One of our uh, NA Advanced players uh, that, that used to play over for Yinny Cherry back in the day, but we got Hey044. Hey man, if he can get the job done, then who cares, am I right? But, so far, not really him being the star of the show. In fact, around him, it's Calyx anymore. And instantly, it's left the Sobo without even the control of the bomb. It's stuck in lobby. He's gone down the vent. He even knows his fate. Pretty layered down, if I gotta say so myself, so... At this point, you're probably just looking for some kills back. Eternal Fire, getting a bit hungry for the info, trying to figure out what's going on. You can see the initiative taken on just everybody's footsteps, but I don't think uh, I don't think Sobol is going to be able to crack this one open. Yeah, highly unlikely. They have the duelies doing great work, though. They're in more in Calyx. I love to see those duelies sing on a map like uh, Nuke. It's a perfect map to play these on. Get top pot, all the likes. Nice shot from Exiloud. Very clean work being done. Re Purchases coming through. Still, there's good weaponry on the Eternal Fire Camp. They definitely prioritize that. They know exactly what's coming, right? When you spot all of these Glocks on a second round, you probably know exactly what's coming in the very next. Most likely. This one's off to a bit of a slow start, and I don't know if it's warranted considering the little bit of utility Anoris comes into this round with. Look at how much they've already wasted on just trying to take some basic outside control, and it's still not really enough. Smoke now refreshed on the single door, and you know how much of a hellhole this can be to try to get through Anoris. Their game plan looks like it wants to be an upper sight take, but they're going to be met by consistent smokes by the CT side, or at least so I thought, but now they've run out. Antares tucking in with the rest of his boys as 56 seconds splits the two teams apart. Putting a lot of pressure on X-Flood right now in this setup. But he's kind of getting support here. I wonder if they're going to reroute here towards the A-bomb site. They're setting up for a little bit of a lobby attack. And we'll see if they can catch him off guard, though. They've got a lot of utility. And Zentaurus has moved in towards the right position. Now comes in that site take that they were not necessarily looking forward to. Calyx and Co. have already shut this one down as well with the bomb dropped in Hut. The both of the remaining players are coming out squeaky. And the time just doesn't really warrant coming back into this round now, does it? Kalex still yet to vacate the route through, so there's a chance here. Antara is very well aware of Sobol's whereabouts, but still just trying to hold down the line for the time being as they set up the crossfire with one another. x has got the kill again, and it's the same duo who shut down the previous to shut it down here. 3-0 on the start for EF. Yeah, just excellent rotations taking place right there all throughout the map. Very nicely done. You can see that they have so much presence there on that a bomb they perfectly positioned to deal with some of that aggression, so able to get the job done despite Anora's throwing in a pretty decent exit. They get to keep money, they get to keep guns, they get to keep momentum, just feeling the exact way they like to. As Antares, not necessarily flashed into the red bin, but he'll still walk away with more than one and a half. Keeping the advantage tenfold, now even trying to blister in the nades to finish the job on Taz. The reload could get punished though, as he comes up and through the smoke, there is no chance for more. This time, it's not as lucky with Hey 44 finding the trade. There is still a bit of a deficit here for Eternal Fire, considering how much space you have to cover with only three players. Yeah, there's going to be some sort of gap, and we'll see if Norris can try and find that gap here. But they're making their moves out in towards the A-bomb or yeah, a -bomb site through Squeaky. Calyx has a lot of ground to cover, and I think he's in part of his barrel. Surely, it doesn't matter. Sobel's just able to flick up and land the shot. Hey 44 moving up towards heaven quickly. Doesn't spot anything, gets that smoke down first things first. He has a player tucked in towards Mini as well. They're ready to take this retake on. x finds the first piece of the puzzle. The trade is so quick. Oof. He wins those on land, though. This is just unfortunate, too. Uh, I mean, usually Zontaris is good for the two there, and even that's a bit of an unlucky play for me more that he probably won't end up making it again. I think the only place this bot goes like this previous round so they can get this buyback out once more, but if they lose it here, then again, problems really start to arise. Taz already ripped away on the early engagement. No vision needed for Zontaris to steal a man advantage in their favor. Now they've got to add on to that. Not able to get away with the same antics as last round is probably a huge stress off their shoulders. That spam looked great on the money. It's able to do a little bit of damage on Rico, so not too bad. Still a long way to claw this one back, though. Four on five at the moment. They're going to make their move on in towards... The lower side, a lot of presence right now in towards Secret, so you know exactly where they're heading. Or a solo aggression, though, gets caught off guard, and there's a double kill. An answer back from Sobel, so swift, and he spots out the player in heaven as well. He needs to kill the skill, and Zentera's will. So necessary. Now x going to make his move. 
They should know this is a lower play. They should know. They've got full control of ramp. They know they crossed outside. You have lobby alongside that. So, it be pretty telegraphed what's going on right now for the likes of Norris. But still, even with that in mind, they've only transitioned one down to the lower site's defense. It's loud. No chance to put up the fight there. And if he is 0-44, doesn't find a kill in the next, like, 10, 20 seconds, this is probably just going to be called a save. Zantara has still yet to make his rotation out, and I think Eternal Fly have already called this off. Yeah, off is saving. So Anoris are going to grab away two, potentially force a save out of most of these players, and we all know the story of T-Side Nuke. Yeah, you certainly only need a couple. Get yourself a good four or five, and, and you might be good to uh, head on to the next half here. Again, I have some slight worries about this Eternal Fire T-Side here. But uh, they, they started off strong. It looks like Ventura's, you know, he's given a lot of space. He's taking a lot of space, rather, uh, is the more accurate phrasing of that. He's going aggressive. He's doing what he does best, right? Trying to manufacture opening picks. He's got the setup there as well. Usually, you know, Calyx or Ekblad is going to be standing close and Pi to try and help him out with his ability to open things up. But right now, you can see the issues here. And, and no longer is that the case, that those protocols are all there, right? You have to teach, educate. K044 and all of these different positions that a, a star like Waxic would know, although he is looking to shine just a little bit. A nice opening pick. We said we needed a little bit more out of him. He shows it. Although it's short-lived, Santeros tries to toss through the smoke there and will not be able to land anything. And, oh my god, Amor. He gets taken down straight through the smoke. So we'll blessed by the spam right there. And now it's a man advantage swinging their way. And they've spotted out some of this lobby re-aggression. They can't get past him. Rico's not going to allow it. That is a definition unlucky, including what's just happened there. Even getting spammed down through a wall. Calyx is up to, 30, uh, to 39. And look at the positions left of the remaining turn of fire players. Again, they don't... They aren't lacking when it comes to map control, especially considering x position. But can't imagine this goes uncleared. Yeah, Rico already showing face to do so, considering Op has shown its face a couple times now here. He even doubles down, though. That's, I'd say, as good as it gets. I mean, sure, he couldn't find the third. The one we won on Sammy was lost, but you brought this down to even Stevens. Hey, 0 44 with the off. Has a couple of 1v1s to pick off now. With that, Alex is left to the responsibility of A. Tucked into mini, but with the barrel spotted, I don't... Yeah, there's not really a chance in this round now, is there? Hey, didn't have it. Try to cover that push coming back through. Taz, and that guy won the MVP. Right. Taking a note from a major MVP. Can't blame him. Well, Norris have gone back to this outside game plans. Antar is not so aggressive this time round, but still tucked in secret till potential for success is evident. Grasshog and Co. are, I'd say, a bit isolated. Too much for my liking, because that's the bomb right now. If Grasshog gets taken down, then Eternal Fire can pretty much just position this entire round around that one outside hold. Antares isn't breaking. He's not giving. And Oris just waiting. I don't think you're ever going to expect to clear out an angle like this again. Zantaras has yet to play here. Yep, walking into it. It's a double down for the man himself. And it already seems like this round's put on the back burner for Taz, who walks up in mini. Gets a free kill back. And maybe tries to snag away the advantage into the hands of his own. But instead, it's a one-for-one -one trade that's not so welcome. It's nine to four. Might just turn to five. Eternal fire. So, so very long since they've found success. And now they're only inches away from it. Yeah, Zantara is delivering right there. Again, I think he's putting a lot of pressure to just try and find opening picks and success. Calyx, nice double down from him. And yeah, we know which way this round's going. Samey, he has plenty of money to buy up in this next round, so it might be worth an attempt, especially knowing that you've already clutched a pretty decent round already. Why not try it once again? See if you can get another one. Calyx looking to take the peak here. But he's got to be so very careful. He has a player flanking out in towards... Secret won't be able to cross safely though, and that will be five. They finally get drop. Come down, he misses the shot. Molly's gonna be thrown over in the mini side, even going to stick the bomb plant, exchanging utility, Ooh. even tagging him up through the wall. Very close, but is it gonna be a, a successful round for Hay? He needs something to go his way. He tries to get the flick, but he can't land it in time. It's a 1v3 for Zane. Nice attempt right there from Hay, but a beautiful round. 
coming through right there saving the day in a big way saying able to find every last player landing that smoke spam landing this a bomb site because that was kind of a, the nightmare scenario a fast a play they're just going to recycle that same exact play though and this time the same exact success a double entry with the mac tins there's no other option here surely maybe you can go for this one a little bit you know why not but immediately we know which way this round's going yeah, right now, if you're a turtle flyer, you're probably just looking for some exit kills again. Zantara's on the MP9. Never even got a striking chance in this one. And I like the way Honoris have kind of swapped up with this T-side does, right? Where at the beginning of the game, it was very outside heavy. It was dependent on what happened there for them to find success in the round. But they kept getting shut down. Zantara's kept finding opening kills. Emora in, in mini was almost undealable with. So, they counteract that. They change up their game plan. And instead, they decide to hit where they think is a bit weaker and rightfully so the inside area is yet to be held onto by eternal fire they're now seven in a row all seven of which have been in succession from anoris who can't be so insane that would be so good for them here and, and they're getting close to that mark can they keep it up here as Interes knows he needs to take a lot of duels and a lot of initiative right now towards the outer yard just to make sure that they can claim the space that they can claim a little bit of control Desperately need it, but there's no smokes to block Hay's angle. I mean, that's if it really matters. He's missed a couple of times, but... They're just going to play it a bit more patiently now. Maybe trying to think, or maybe thinking to themselves how their pace changes affect the Eternal Fire to try to, I don't know, go in for a fight first. But so far, it's just a utility battle. Smokes being deployed left, right, and center with only one left for Eternal Fire CT side. Molotov's a different story. But they're yet to give anything up. They're just waiting for an horse to make the push. Maybe able to finally pull the pin on this one. A lot of damage done from Amor. He's been doing a good job of locking down this A side here. Same case is true for Zenteris when he helps out and rotates in. They're able to slip down towards the vents. That's pretty impressive. A little gap. But a couple of low HP bars here, things are becoming very awkward. And another double entry comes through from Taz and Grasshog, who find two opening picks there. It's another immediate three on five here, or two on five rather. Now, A044 and Kalix probably have no other option left than to just save. And the consistent thing this half, man, it's like even that was all unconfirmed damage. So if they wanted to like go for it, I, mean, I don't know, they just couldn't feasibly do that, in my opinion. Like you don't know how low they are, you don't know how. Rico, Grasshog, and Taz are only one bullet away from the graveyard. Then you still have to go walking back and into B. It's it's a whole mess, man, really. And I'm surprised that works out as well as it does for Anoris. Like, usually considering, like, Eternal Fire had all five alive, they weren't giving anything too crazy up. Uh-oh, Kalix should be dead. Oh. Right there, safe and sound. I like the way we get to watch this go down. Taz has been doing a great job towards that outer yard lurk, and you can see all of... <laughs> CG side needs to start getting rolling ASAP here once again, or otherwise they might just have to chalk it up to dust two here soon. Yeah, I mean, you, we come into this game worrying about what Eternal Fire are going to show us on the T side too, so the fact is, this is already getting out of hand on the one side that might just favor them. Rico, again, a double entry into A. It's just rinse and repeat, man. The Norris, they're back in that mindset of we can do no wrong, and can you blame them? They've walked into any single bomb site without, like, any problems whatsoever. Trying to flash x Cloud in through Heaven. There is no way you're going to crack into this bomb site. The vaults on burst into a crisp before you can even take one of these fights on Torres. Making a round out of it. With a double kill coming back and extra damage on the third. He's still tagged up as low. So I don't think he has any more interest in trying to make, a, make this one competitive. Just back away and spawn in which Sammy will catch you. Now it's up to Hay to save the EWP in which they still spotted him, but he's finally able to land one of the shots. Now you might want to stop hunting him, but you've still grabbed up a nine. Nice little bow on that one. Why not go for another hunt, though? If, if he misses this, then that could be disastrous. He does connect. Guys, wait for the aggressive maneuver. I'll try and find that here, but look at these A-pops here. Again, I'm kind of accredited to more and Calyx at uh, giving great sight holds. But sometimes you just get overrun. Sometimes the utility is a little bit too strong. There's a nice shooting out of Hay 40. And that guy won the MVP. That's right. Taking a note from a major MVP. Can't blame him. 
Well, Norris have gone back to this outside game plan. Zontaris not so aggressive this time around, but still tucked in secret to potential for success is evident. Grasshog and Co. are, I'd say, a bit isolated. Too much for my liking, because that's the bomb right now. If Grasshog gets taken down, then Eternal Fire can pretty much just position this entire round around that one outside hold. Zontaris isn't breaking. He's not giving. And Norris just waiting. And I don't think you're ever going to expect to clear out an angle like this again. Zontaris has yet to play here. Yep, walking into it. It's a double down for the man himself. And it already seems like this round's put on the back burner for Taz, who walks up in mini. Gets a free kill back. And maybe tries to snag away the advantage into the hands of his own. But instead, it's a one-for-one -one trade that's not so welcomed. Nine to four might just turn to five. Eternal Fire. So, so very long since they found success. And now they're only inches away from it. Yeah, Zantara is delivering right there. Again, I think he's putting a lot of pressure to just try and find opening picks and success. Kalix, nice double down from him. And yeah, we know which way this round's going, Sammy. He has plenty of money to buy up in this next round, so it might be worth an attempt, especially knowing that you've already clutched a pretty decent round already. Why not try it once again? See if you can get another one. Kalix looking to take the peek here, but he's got to be so very careful. He has a player flanking out in towards secret won't be able to cross safely though and that will be five they finally get off of the uh the lost streak there and it's off the hands of Zanteras who delivers a whole lot it's also a nice double kill coming through off the the follow-up from Cali. i mean we're still seeing the problems that i was talking about in the pregame too you kind of highlighted it as well where it's like that is certain don't do it so well don't do it i thought he was literally just gonna grip it and rip it and spam him Still might. Phase in the Ooh. smoke. The terror's taking a lot of flack here. No, they continue to spot out so much information. They are hearing everything, and somehow not a single point of damage has been done. A044, though, taking some initiative. This is what we like to see out of him. All right, we've seen him start to hit some shots here, start to warm up a little bit in the server. Now he's a prime opportunity to open up proceedings to deliver an opening pick, especially with a couple low HP bars on your heavy hitters. Down so low, he does find the opener, but it's quickly traded out. Kalix hits the deck. And Zantara, even despite his low HP bar, still holds steady. I mean, you know where three players are right now, so I can't blame them for this quick transition back into the ramp room. But instead of sticking around, I believe x Flout is just tucked into the lower bomb site. Yeah, trying to buy time for the assistance as he's tucks himself in dark. Now everybody starts swinging from the fences, though, and it doesn't work. Two players instantly fall, they tumble, they collapse, and now they have to pull off the retake again. This one a lot less favoring than previous rounds, but if they can keep hitting shots like that, maybe there's a chance. Good nade from the afterlife, he'll connect for a double, Emor finishes the job, and the offer. He's the one stepping up, an impact finally made by one of the youngsters of this eternal- Nuke, but if you can, again, let the Zantaras continue to activate here and deliver like he is right now, where he just continues to take all these aim duels, just taking as many fights as possible, if he starts to win them consistently- If there's anywhere the aiming is going to benefit you, it's probably from the T's perspective. And with a player like Zantares, I would never be sleeping on him. You can't- this is a interesting angle there from Sammy. I think they saw him a little bit in that position. Either way, they're still able to just take long-range duels here. I mean, up against the P250, maybe you can answer back here, but so far, no reply just yet. There's x -Flood finally able to show up, and oh, some missed shots from Rico. Unable to connect, and it gets capitalized on eventually, though, the numbers start to drop, and Rico, he does start to connect, and that's when things turn sour for Eternal Fire. Somehow, after walking away with a couple of opening picks outside, no less, it's a Norse winning that pistol. That's just something that really can't happen. I mean, yeah, the setup was pretty nice from the CT side, but it's like they got most of the map control. They got most of the kills coming back. They were favored, I'd say, as the time went forward. But, I mean, just too many fights given away. Too many individuals looking here with their T sides. Well, they're going to have to show us right now. I don't really think we're going to get much more opportunities to see what they have to show us if they can't win this one right here. Only imagine without a bomb plant, this would pretty much be two for the price of one. But they do have a couple of MP9s in the mix, so it's not all for nothing. Three of these SMGs could be a bit tantalizing to try to make successful. Especially when you're going against guns like AKs. Look at the map control they've had to give up in tandem because of it too. I mean, you've already got a man walk down secret for freeze on Taurus. This is info that might be heard by Taz, but I don't know what you can really do about it. 
might not be a lot there, but ooh, that's a beautiful opening pick there. Tough angle to deal with, and ooh, he takes a lot of damage back. That's all the way from Squeaky Door. But still, he's able to walk away with his life, which is oh so key. No trades back. And now Xanteras, he looks to go on the hunt here for this kill. Taz, can he play his life right? Can he pick the right angles to cover? I don't think he will. Oh no, bad timing, but Xanteras still lands the headshot. That's more of a whip than anything to Xantaras. It's just a lucky break there, MP9 diving in from the heavens, but it still can't find the kill. Grasshog has given up control of the A-bomb site. Eternal Fire swarm it now with Xantaras covering the vent rotate. There is no world in Aura's pick this round back up. Taz tried everything and then some to give it to his own team. And it's the unfortunate finish that really costs them. Eternal Fire, though, an early wake up on this T side could lead to a late game resurgence again. I wouldn't be surprised. I with, with how Zontaras just played this round, honestly, I know he's starting to feel himself, so I think he is definitely the key right now if you're Eternal Fire, especially that you got Kalex who looked pretty good in it too. Yeah, that's a pretty terrifying round right there from Zantaras. Getting away with all of that given that he got caught off guard multiple different times and yet he's still able to flick around for the kills. So that's exactly what we needed out of him. That that sort of impact is is so so necessary, right? I mean, the MP9s, I think, if those are A1Ss instead, I mean, Zantaris would have been walking away with his life. There's a lot of damage that was done right there. And e even right there, there was a lot of damage done. So you can see multiple different... The mix and things only have the potential to get more messy for the likes of Eternal Fire. A lot of utility again exchanged in the early round. This isn't going to favor Anoris. Like, they, while it was a bonus in the previous, and they are walking into this with an investment, it's not a full buy. They are missing a couple of bits and pieces, so... Making up for it in the kill feed is Taz, hoping to try to regain control of the round. And Sobol's still all here for it in the ramp room. Not yet backing away, but still in a position to do so if things go haywire. And Sandy's going to call in for assistance. Maybe even set up a crossfire here? No, so far it's just an aura tucking in lower preemptively. They did that quite a bit last round as well, getting very quickly in towards lower. Maybe that's preparation for Zantara's and the way he plays things out quite a bit frequently going in towards secret but either way they're just landing all of the kills they've gotten three separate isolated duels right there and they've won them all which is an impressive feat up against the roster here in Taz makes it another one Kalix probably not long for this world or at least not long for this round here is to make their ways in to flank him out so we'll actually going to go down but that's alarm bells ringing Rico not taking any risk here actually it will and they'll just win it they'll win the fight there and that's an immediate reply I don't let him get too far into it. No reason to lose as many guns as you have to. Just relax for the minute. Let him, let him walk into you, says Rico. And I love this from Sammy. So maybe that's what they were aiming for, right? Try to get him tucked in. Or rather, try to get him in a somewhat aggressive position down lower so we can see somebody going in, fall off if he needed to, have assistance if it needed to be. Aggression. Right now we have three players tucked in towards spawn. I think lining up some out of yard utility. Just now being thrown out. But this is also allowing maybe potential space to be taken by a Norse, given the very passive positions that they've played. Still, though, no no real space grabbed just yet. Passive off the rip, as it looks like Eternal Fire potentially just setting up for an A-side execution. I mean, you've got a couple on the roof, and I don't think they're going to add too much depth to the strat book in this round. Maybe they are, it's just a fake. Now going over in the ramp side, Sobol's only opportunity is to play his life. But Sammy here in the ramp, like, well, in J-Hall with the AWP, there is no escape through CT spawn. It is only going to be down into lower. With the bomb spotted too, they can be assured, or they can be reassured in their call. Now the crossfire set up to deeply establish things. I don't really think there's a world eternal fire able to crack into this. Maybe if you're lucky, you can get the bomb, but even the transition out is going to be painful. Had to expend some utility right there to even get the bomb, and they still haven't done that. That's mission number one here. Kalex is going to turn the corner. Big kill from him. And he, same thing from Zentaris here. They're following it up with a lot of frags here, but Taz is going to hold steady with three kills to reply and to keep things at bay here. x turns the corner, and Taz finds them all. That is a beautiful sequence from him. A rolling back the years moment for sure from Taz. It's rare we see moments from them like like that. I mean, he's one of the lowest rated players on this roster. That's no discredit to him. He's just more discredit than the others. So usually outshined by the other individuals, but not in this game. So far, it's been... Just to really pull you across the line, but that's also kind of a credit to the deficit that 
they're in right now on the great CT side put up. Amor is stuck between two flames. He wow. cannot escape. That is absolutely brutal right there. Catch them between two fire. They won't be able to reply there. That's a big pickoff right there and a frustrating way to go down. Yes, you could say he dies the eternal fire and and around like this, that's so massively impactful. Uh, it's not no, it's not necessarily so much about just the raw four on five. It's the fact that this four on five happens in what could be your last gun round. Kallax, again, gets a lucky retrieval of a kill through a wall, but you'll take it at this rate. So now they go back to even footing with the utility still not all that great. It's sparse for Eternal Fire, only having two flashbangs to try to make this one work. Jamie is your next opportune target. With him moving up with the AWP and Squeaky, it's a world where you double down in the entries. But how far does he go? Does he just hold on to this control? I think he does, yeah. No need to overextend just yet. He's still got the off press in ramp, and Sobol's going to get one. No, I thought he was going to fall away. But instead, he looks for more. Finally, opting to duck down into the lower bomb site with the assistance of, I believe, Taz around the J Hall. Baking out presence of him leaving. The timer's starting to dwindle thin again. Eternal Fire have to make a move here. I like the way he played that right there. Times that second peak there. Gives himself another opportunity to extend the advantage here. Doesn't land oh. it, but x Cloud has landed a beautiful headshot. And all of a sudden, things become very, very sour here for Norris. There's a double off retake, and we've already seen Eternal Fire struggle with that. Now I think Norris is going to suffer the same result. They can't even make it up to Vince. They're going to rely everything on Kaz to get the job done here, and he just falls to Hay 044. And I think this double lot probably going to call on a save here. I would have picked no one else to close around for Eternal Fire. Y'all are sleeping on Hay 044. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm wide awake right now. I've got full faith. Any. Hey, 044 believers. I'm a believer. They won. Hmm. And he didn't do great. I mean, he, he didn't do bad, but he didn't do great. So, I don't know how entwined he is with all the boys in the Turkish scene, but... And he made magic happen, and he, he clearly made some connections work, so. He's getting his chance now, and I'd say so far, it's not all that blunder. There's been a couple of whiffed opportunities, but for the most part, still doing his job, I'd say. But for Eternal Fire, more of a job needs to be done. You need to win this round right here. You need to reset the economy of Anoris. You need to get up the double digits with that. You can't really hiccup in the process. You have to make these next couple of conversions very clean. Yeah, they, they must be absolutely necessary here and right now they have to make a move on in towards yeah i don't i don't really know what they're aiming to do here they've just pretty much wasted an entire minute went back into spawn through the outside smokes and they haven't even faked all that much outside presence i think taz has still got a pretty much a good situation a good hold of the situation and outside here's nothing crossing so they're just gonna tuck into the a site's defense oh. This is a shot on Sammy. It's all a bait and switch. Shut up. They come walking into the belly of the beast. And they're not walking out alive. Everybody instantly mowed down. Not looking pretty. A lot of lacking head Kevlar. Very little utility at the moment. And Moore just looking to make his move down. Vince. Oh, no. We got stuck. The Vince isn't blown open. And no that's going to be his downfall right there. That is absolutely brutal. HE gets oh. caught. Oh, no. x able to avoid it. Just narrowly, though. Zantara's looking for a fight. He's coming with fury around this angle. And they can't assemble the boost. <laughs> Zantaris is going to get punished for it as well. That is so frustrating. I mean, I'm surprised it wasn't a kill, let alone just the damage. So I guess Zantaris is more lucky than anything. You got to admit. Definitely a mistake he probably shouldn't have been making, but Alex has been making so much money off of these spams through Hut. I'm surprised Rico is still just sitting around here. Playing a dangerous game. You must be careful here. You must tread lightly. You just want to close this one out as soon as possible here. Those two on the cards at the moment. They got one shot to try to stop that from happening. One for one trade out squeaky, but yet to turn his attention away is this mini player, Grasshog. He's got to, bro, just look to your left. Hey, he turns and gets the kill. I was gonna say, man, now, now it's on Tarzan and I'm gonna have a 1v4. He knows it's a savage.